Hey guys, I'm back here with another video. This time I'm actually recording it from our bedroom. You see my cool setup here. Had it for a while, but never had the time to actually do anything with it. But today I wanted to bring you a little commentary on one of my favorite subjects, which is kind of sad. And I'm not even a fan of this team, but I find them so fascinating as to why they're so bad. That's the new Cleveland Browns. I have to say new because I actually work with kids who are football fans, but are not even aware the Browns used to be good at some point, which makes me feel very old. Just thank you guys. I appreciate that. So I've been thinking a lot because this, honestly, of all of the bad teams that the Browns have had since they've come back to the NFL, this is probably the worst. I, I know they've had some close games this year, but the majority of them, if they're even close for a while, they just let slip away or they get blown out completely. I've been wondering, is this team cursed? Is this new incarnation, not the old Browns? I just think that old Browns, they were, that was like a series of bad luck. This time, I think from the return of the team in 99 up to now, they are completely cursed. This team was cursed before they even played their first preseason game, as far as I'm concerned. They came back when I was 12. The Browns left when I was 8 years old. After the 95 season, they went 6-10, and 10, and uh, fans were obviously pissed off. They were ripping seats out of the stadium at the last home game against the Bengals. I, I remember seeing that on the news. It was pretty weird, and I didn't get it, of course, because I'm 8 years old. I'm a Rams fan at the time, so I didn't really understand football completely, but I was learning at the time. And like the Rams had just moved to St. Louis, and they became my team. Um, but I remember seeing the Browns you know, fans acting like donkeys out of a municipal stadium because the team was leaving fast forward four years later they're back um and after a lot of years only two winning seasons uh which is geez um the, the the bucks weren't even this bad in their first 15 years they at least went to the nfc championship game but two winning seasons multiple number one overall picks none of them panned out um just a lot of bad luck. I genuinely think this franchise is cursed, and I want to share my thoughts with all of you as to why I think that's the case. First and foremost, I'm a big believer as a sports guy that karma follows you, and I'm very superstitious. So, you know, I have all my little isms, like a lot of fans do, where you just you don't do certain things or touch certain things until you know so and so happens. Um, when they started building the new Brown Stadium, all they built it on top of Cleveland Municipal Stadium, which is bad luck just breeds there. It's like a big ball of negative energy that has resided at the location of that old stadium because of, you know, the drive happening there, Red Right 88 happening there, which happened before I was even born. But, you know, I, you know, I have seen the clips and the play multiple times. Um, you know, it's the same, same place that Jim Brown used to play. And then he got fired because he chose to do movies over coming back to play football in his prime. Um, of course, um, Art Modell owned the team and he took them out of that stadium. There's just so much negative energy surrounding the Browns, not the Indians. Cause they played there too, but they really weren't good enough. At least in my lifetime when they were playing there. So they, they, they were irrelevant. They got a different location and they had a lot of success. The Browns built their new stadium, which I don't even know the name of it now because they've changed the name of it. It's still Cleveland Brown Stadium to me, right on top of the old venue. So you curse whoever puts on these new Browns uniforms and helmets and pads from Jump Street. We've already talked about the draft in the previous video. You don't draft a quarterback with the first pick. They did that, ruined the guy's career. Um, and we did a redrafting uh, prior to Number two, the success of the New England Patriots solely stems off of the misery of the Browns. What I mean by that, for those who don't know, the last playoff victory that the city of Cleveland got to enjoy from their football team was in 94, where the old Browns beat New England at Cleveland Municipal in a wild card game. The coach of the Browns was Bill Belichick. If you're not old enough to remember that, then this is probably a shock to you. But he's the last coach to win a game for the Cleveland Browns. He did it against the team that he would lead to five Super Bowl rings as a head coach. 
pure irony. Weird. Also, that following week that year, they went to Pittsburgh and lost in the divisional round. Uh, their only playoff appearance as the current Browns was in 2002. They lost the 2003 wildcard game at Pittsburgh. The way they lost that game is another nugget of information for this video. They are driving with under a minute to go, looking to either tie or win the game. Now, they're doing this with their backup quarterback. Tim Couch got hurt, so Kelly Holcomb had come on late in the season, led them to some key victories, and got him into the playoffs. They're driving. He completes a pass to a receiver who's trying to get out of bounds and does not in time, and the Browns try to spike the ball to stop the clock, but the clock runs out on them. Game over, season over. And, of course, it's to their long rival, long-time rival, the Steelers. Literally, the Steelers are the Brown. The Browns are the Steelers' bitch. I don't like saying that, uh, but it's completely true. It's like the Rams were the 49ers' bitch for the entire decade of the '90s. They lost 19 straight games to them. Same premise. Steelers. They actually one fan actually on video said, "We miss playing you guys. We miss the two free wins a year." That's how it is. Their last two playoff appearances, the season was ended in Pittsburgh. Just. Mm -mm -mm. All bad. Then add on the fact that the original Browns that relocated to Baltimore four years after doing so win a Super Bowl with a lot of players who played for the old Browns, owned by Art Modell, the former Browns owner. You can't make this up, I, I swear. It, it's If you're a Browns fan, it's sickening if you wind up watching this. And I don't blame you. I'm not a Browns fan, and it makes me sick. Like, how many bad things can happen to a franchise in two incarnations like this? It was bad enough with the first go-around. I think it hurts more the second time because you got your team back. That wasn't supposed to leave in the first place. Cleveland, the Browns are one of the marquee franchises in the entire pantheon of professional football in the United States. They're, you know, they were held in the high regards with the Packers and, you know, the Bears back when they used to matter. Uh, Steelers, Cowboys, 49ers, like they were the elite of franchises in terms of previous success and name value. You know, they won a bunch of NFL championships in the pre Super Bowl era. Hall of Famers, arguably the greatest running back of all time in Jim Brown. Mary Motley, running back who helped break the color barrier in pro football. So many great players and stories and games that were played by those players and those teams. Art Modell, up until he moved the team, was a beloved figure in Cleveland. Now he is the equivalent of Stan Kroenke in St. Louis. Pretty much should be anywhere, but that's a story for another day. And I don't want to raise my blood pressure because I'm still a Rams fan regardless of him. As it should be. You love your team, you love your team. So more power to us few Rams fans left in Missouri and all Browns fans who have stuck through all of this. Yeah, their attendance sucks, and it should. I wouldn't show up to watch this team either. Half of them can't buy booze. Youngest team in football, Hugh Jackson, is a good football coach, but he can't get it done. And Mike Ditka always said, you are you are what your record says you are. He has He's a good football man. Um, he's been on some good teams. This ain't it. He has one win as a head coach with the Cleveland Browns. And that was last year because the Chargers missed a field goal think about that the Chargers losing a game because of special teams shock but back to the point I just think this is a very cursed franchise so many bad things have happened to them they've lost a game because the fans threw excessive amounts of alcohol in the field in protest of a bad call it's called bottle gate you should look it up they one year signed the top offensive lineman in free agency with Charles Bentley who's an Ohio State alum he grew up a Browns fan. He wanted to come to Cleveland. Not too many guys say they actually want to play for the Browns. In the first play of training camp, he gets injured and suffers a staph infection. His career is done. First play. He's the biggest free agent signing the Browns have had since they came back to the league and then gets hurt. Staph infection. Has to retire. Dude is a Pro Bowl center. You can't make this up. Um... Need we talk about Johnny Manziel, who I hope gets his stuff straightened out. He's in college, but he didn't work. He was not. Um, he wasn't a man trying to play a man's game. Justin Gilbert, another first-round pick, malcontent. 
Um, Braylon Edwards had a few good years. His best years were with the Jets, of course, which, I mean, is, is that much of an upgrade? The Jets are as big a dumpster fire historically as the Browns have been the last 15 years, more, more often than not. Kellen Winslow, first-round pick, got in a motorcycle accident as a rookie. What are you doing? Really? Motorcycles. Uh, Courtney Brown, 2000. You had the number one pick. You had the option to take either him or LeVar Arrington, who would have a more dominant NFL career and was a lot healthier. This guy gets hurt. I don't even think he totaled 30 sacks in a five-year career. I, as, once again, as a Rams fan, we've experienced a lot of bad draft picks ourselves. Jason Smith, uh, Lawrence Phillips, Tony Banks, uh, Alex Barron. You know, I could go on and on with us, but with the Browns, it's just, it combines bad draft picks, bad luck, bad play on the field. And here's the biggest worry. I think this organization genuinely tries to put together a competitive on-field product and with a competent coaching staff. Something always goes wrong. Stephen A. Smith always calls the Dallas Cowboys the accident waiting to happen. The Cleveland Browns are an accident waiting to happen. And that saddens me because for once this year, they had a good draft. Miles Garrett was hurt, but in his first game, he had two sacks. He's got a lot of promise. The tight end, they took David Njoku. A lot of promise. It never hurts to take a tight end from Miami. History has shown that. So I think they did very good there now with Deshaun Kaiser. He's shown some flash, but he's also not ready. I think I think he's like the 98th different Browns quarterback to start in the last 20 years for them. <laughs> Guys, it, it is embarrassing and sad. You don't even have to be a Browns fan to feel bad for this franchise. Unless you're a Steelers, Ravens, or Bengals fan, then you probably feel nothing for them. But you get your weekly laughs. I've just always found it so fascinating for one team, one organization to be this incompetent, this bad, year in and year out, say for 2002 and 2007, to prior to those two years or other than, if you take those away, their best record since coming back to the NFL is 7-9. and nine. The Jeff Fisher special. That is the best takeaway from two years that the Cleveland Browns have done since they've come back to the league. The Tampa Bay Bucks started out horribly from 1976 to 78 of course you know they were the yucks lost their first 26 games then they had a couple really good years and then they were bad for 15 years the 49ers right now they're bad but they're rebuilding i i know the browns are rebuilding but they've been rebuilding for a decade how much longer can you do this until you get something right there is no more cursed franchise in the history of the NFL than this Browns. Even more than the Bills, who lost four straight Super Bowls. Even more than the Jets, who I know are cursed because Joe Namath sold his soul to the devil just so he could win a ring. They're waiting for they're waiting for him to go in the go in the ground before they can win again. And I hate saying that. Went to school with a guy who plays for the Jets. He's a heck of a football player. But they're cursed. The Detroit Lions are cursed. Uh, and I know there's probably a couple others that are, and I can't think of them off the top of my head, but the Cleveland Browns, the new Browns are, have it worse than the old Browns did because this team can't even get to the postseason. Those teams did, and in the 80s, they had fantastic football teams, but they couldn't get it done. This team can't even get there. One playoff appearance in 18 years. Can you find another franchise that's had a worse run than that? Let me know what you think, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll have more down the road. See ya.